Welcome to Calming Heart, the sounds of David's Psalms. I'm glad you've joined us for this brief moment we share together. I will be playing some of the music that has been brought out of the Psalms. My name is Steve Reese. I play the harp. And over the last several years, I've been bringing the sounds of David's Psalms into recordings. You can find a lot of my music on my website, www.calmingharp.com. I have CDs available and MP3s. And you can go to YouTube. If you go to YouTube and then type in Peregrinati, P-E-R-E-G-R-I-N-N-A-T-T-I, you will find hours of beautiful harp music that you can just play in the background and be calmed with the music that David may have played for his sheep at one time or another. So as we share this half hour, join me and enjoy the sounds of David's harp. Well, good morning once again. It's um, Sabbath, Saturday, end of the week, last seventh day, however you <clears throat> however you want to call it. And uh, it's almost the last of July. It's the 27th, so this month is gone. This year is gone. <laughs> I keep saying that, but keep feeling that. Anyway, thank you for joining once again. And today I wanted to go to Psalm 22. I'm going to have Shirley read that in a little bit here. And the music we're going to play on this um, episode is going to be called The Shining Light. It's um, some music I did um, in a CD that we have uh, called, with Shirley reading scripture, called Shalom Power Clips. And then um, this is just the music track from it. And um, so I hope you enjoy that as well. The reason why I chose Psalm 22 today is I was going over what did I want to say today. The th things that continue to unravel here in... Uh, in our nation, the United States, I know some of you are listening from other places, but the what from what I read in the news, it's not a lot different there either. <laughs> and so, one of the things I think we have to—I was listening to a talk, uh, an interview, this last week. We we were we've been traveling a bit to, and um, so some of the things we do when we travel is to listen to um, interviews and and teachings and things um, to help pass the time and anyway this interview the fellow was talking about so often we look at our present current situation of the day that we're in and we make all of our decisions based on that very limited perspective of what's happening and he advised that what we need to do is to step back and place what's happening on that particular moment onto the timeline that we have experienced, first of all, in our whole life, but then even greater timeline, the historic timeline. 
And he went on to uh, talk about some times in our own nation's history when things were actually much worse than they are right now. And he advised that instead of getting all tied up in a knot about what's happening right now, that we take a step back and appreciate the fact that we've had rough times before and we've gone through them and came out the other side and we're able to move on and to apply that same understanding to what's happening now. And I was thinking, you know, that's, that's, first of all, that's a really good way to put perspective on what's happening. Um, to not get so, so drawn into it that we think that's the only reality that we have to think about. But on another thing came to my mind, and that's why I wanted to share Psalm 22 with you, is because if we really want to think about it, one of the darkest days of personal experience that ever occurred on the face of this earth was what happened to Yeshua, Jesus, when he was nailed to the tree, the cross. And as we look at his statements that he made while he was hanging up there, bleeding all over, lacerated all over from merciless whipping, knowing that he was going to die in a few hours, what, where was his mind? What did he say and what did he do? And one of the first things we read is that he says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Eloi, Eloi, alama sabachthani. And some people take that to mean that he was feeling deserted. Um, that's one way to look at it. Uh, Andrew Gabriel Roth wrote a, um, actually did an interpretation of the New Testament based on the Peshitta, which is the Aramaic that, is believed that what Yeshua spoke most of the time, or at least knew. In fact, the the movie The Passion they use Aramaic in his, the dialogue in that movie um, to try to keep it genuine. But anyway, when you push, when you when Andrew Gabriel Roth translated out of the Peshitta. It could mean, my God, my Father, have I hung here long enough? Can we get this over with? <laughs> because we know from the statements he made before he was taken into captivity and put on the cross, he told Peter to put away his sword because he said, don't you know that I could call a, thousand call a legion of angels to my side? But I came for this purpose. I came to do this. And so we get this incredible understanding that everything is, I don't know if I would want to use the word scripted, but Yeshua is plodding along, interesting all through the book of John. He says, my time has yet not, not yet come, my time has not yet come, my time has not yet come. And then I believe it's Andrew brings to him these people from all over other countries that have come to Jerusalem for the feast of Passover. And they said, they want to see you. And he said, and at that point he said, my time has now come. And so there's like this tick tock, tick tock going on in the life of Yeshua. And so everything he did was by design. And so he's hanging on the cross and he says, my God, my God, why does, why have you forsaken me? And one of the most beautiful interpretations I have heard on that is that Yeshua was actually quoting Psalm 22. And I'm going to have Shirley read that in just a minute here. The first words of that Psalm start out, this is to the choir master according to the Doe of the Dawn, is how it's, how it's introduced, and it's a Psalm of David. 
And the first sentence says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And then it goes on to to talk about how David is feeling at that point, what David's writing. And he writes in there, in verse 16, or, or, let's see. Um, they have, yes, verse 22, verse 16. They have pierced my hands and feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. And they divide, verse 18, they divide my garments among them. And for my clothing, they cast lots. And so David is talking about himself, but he's also prophesying about Messiah. And we're told over and over again that Yeshua is the son of David. The Messiah is the son of David. And so David is directly linking himself and his experience with what he's going through, with what he understands Messiah will go through. And then Yeshua, if you think about it, he is saying the last words he says, it is finished. And the last words in Psalm 22 is, he has done it. Sounds kind of the same. So it's very possible that Yeshua was saying this psalm to himself to, for his strengthening of his spirit to endure what he was going through. And he wasn't saying it loud enough for anybody to hear and record it, but he was saying it to himself. I don't, I can't prove that. But it's a very interesting thought. And the reason why I think it's so important is because we, when we go through experiences, a lot of times we get lost and sucked into the experience and we forget that we belong to our Heavenly Father. We forget that He has made provision for us. We forget that He has promises for us. We forget that He calls on us to praise His name even in the midst of the dark circumstances. And essentially that's what Yeshua is doing, I believe, if He in fact is quoting this psalm, is He's He's reminding himself that everything is unfolding as his father his, and our father, our heavenly father, has ordained for it to unfold. And he's quoting this psalm to himself to remind himself that nothing's going to happen that is not under the control of his heavenly father. So I'm going to have Shirley read this psalm. I'm going to play the music of Shining Light. And um, then I'll have some comments afterwards. To the choir master, according to the dough of the dawn, a psalm of David. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me from the words of my groaning? Oh, my Elohim, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but I find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel, in you our fathers trusted 
they trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried and were rescued. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by mankind and despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They make mouths at me. They wag their heads. He trusts in Yahweh. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him for he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me from the womb. You made me trust you at my mother's breast. On you was I cast from my birth, and from my mother's womb you have been my Elohim. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is none to help. Many bulls encompass me, strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My strength is dried up like a potsherd. My tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs encompass me, a company of evildoers encircles me. They have pierced my hands and feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O Yahweh, do not be far off. O you, my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion. You have rescued me from the horns of the wild oxen. I will tell of your name to my brothers. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear Yahweh, praise him. All you offspring of Yaakov, glorify him and stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he has not despised or abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, and he has not hidden his face from him, but has heard when he cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will perform before those who fear him. The afflicted shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise Yahweh. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to Yahweh, and all the families of the nation shall worship before you, for kingship belongs to Yahweh, and he rules over the nations. All the prosperous of the earth eat and worship. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, even the one who could not 
keep himself alive. Posterity shall serve him. It shall be told of Yahweh to the coming generation. They shall come and proclaim his righteousness to a people yet unborn that he has done it. So there's Psalm 22. I think a very important psalm for us to uh, keep in our repertoire, as it were. Another one of the very interesting um, thoughts there. Um, it, I've used it, Psalm 22, in a couple of my teachings. But Psalm verse three it says, "But thou art, but you are holy, and you inhabit the praises of Israel or of your people, the praises of your people." And that word for inhabit is a really interesting word. Um, it in Hebrew it is yeshuv, and it means to sit down by implication to dwell or to remain, to settle, to marry, um, to abide as in a habitation. It can even mean to press down. And, um, it, you know, if somebody sits down, they press down on a chair, that's for sure. But there's, it seems to be just even a little bit more strongly indicating that when the praises of the people are being directed be to, towards our Heavenly Father, He hears those praises and He presses down towards them. He dwells in them. He, it, it attracts Him. And it just leads me to think about this whole idea of when when I'm in a difficult situation where I don't feel like praising, <laughs> let me tell you, if I will go ahead and praise him anyway, it will attract him to my to myself, to my situation, to what's going on, and change the circumstances because of his presence. And how many times is the word praise used? In fact, I looked up, I think it's 111 different psalms have the word praise in it. So that's just the psalms. And um, Paul, rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. And in case you forgot it, rejoice. <laughs> so rejoice and praise are kind of the same thing in many respects. And so, so the... I heard one talk given one time, and just I just remembered this one phrase out of it that it it said that that praise is the pathway out of trouble. Praise is the pathway out of trouble, and that's really true. It puts our mind into a whole different setting. It it has us thinking about totally different things when we're praising than when we're feeling sorry for ourselves or where we're just suffering under really bad situation. And I think if it's really true, and I, I just kind of do believe that Yeshua really was, you know, he, he actually knew Scripture very well. <laughs> and why wouldn't he be quoting the, these words to himself to give himself the strength to endure what he was going through? Because he knew that he had to exit triumphantly. He could not let the enemy win. He came to save us, and he knew that if he gave in to the enemy, he would not be able to save us. He might be able to save himself, but he wouldn't be able to save us. And he came to save us. And so he strengthened up himself with the word of Yahweh and endured to accomplish what he came to do. 
And that's the word for us today, is to strengthen ourselves in the word of our Heavenly Father. You know, he, it's not by accident that these words of Scripture have endured 4,000 years plus of history and writing and rewriting and scribes copying and then we find a, a piece of the Isaiah scroll in the Qumran caves that was written f up to 500 years before Yeshua and we find it 2,000 years after him so 2,500 year, years old and it's saying precisely the same thing as it said back then when it was originally written. Scripture is one of the most amazing miracles that we have in front of us. These words that were penned so long ago that are still have still been preserved accurately for us to continue to gain strength and courage from, to praise from, to see the promises of our Heavenly Father from, to see the history of how He took care of people in the past as a an image of how He's going to take care of us now and into the future. So as you go into your week, I just ask that you will remember, I encourage you to remember what our Heavenly Father said and that you would praise Him and give Him a place to sit in your life so that you can gain the victory over whatever is attacking you from the enemy this week and stay preserved in his strength. So I hope you've enjoyed our time together. Stay tuned as I say, a little pun. I have many more songs to share with you. I have more to share about how this all comes together. And I pray that you will share and help people, especially those you see stressed, especially in these times that we're going through. Bring people to this calming and this peace and this rest that this beautiful music of the Psalms of David brings to each of our lives. Thank you for listening. Hope to see you next week. Many, many blessings to you all today.